As I, was, I don't feel any problem because I've always maintained that Nubia, Ethiopia, and other countries on the beginning of the Nile are much older. You did say that, I, and I've Egypt, heard you say that many I, times. I, I tell people all the time, yes. after you learn Egypt, then you will learn her mother and her grandmother and great-grandmother. That's right. Until you get back to the source. But Egypt is at the end of a revolution that, uh, that, uh, 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 that took place. A cultural revolution. Doc, I, okay, you know, I've had a chance and, and been graced by God to, to spend two trips with you in Egypt. So my head just like cracked open. 9,000 years old. The foundation has proven to be, a, and it's a worship temple made of stone. Uh, the same metal with naturally no mortar. And um, when I brought it out that it was had occurred, uh, they call Emory and different university, and they deny that it had been a fact. Uh, Bill Jones and other, I call him from Egypt and tell him. Now they finally admitted that that uh, building. What we, I know what they do is that they take their time to see whatever they have to take and do, do their little Of course, thing. of course, yes. Now, now in relationship to the work that you would like to do with this, I would like to to do excavation in the same area. In the same area, because okay. I, based upon the, my previous excavation and based upon speaking with the elders of the area around in the 1930s and 1940s, late 40s, after the World War, the elders informed me that they were aware of certain structures, pieces of structures where that were used. They, 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 they took the stone from these structures and they were, in fact, foundation for previous structures okay so this won't be the only structure you're saying that it's probably going to be that area it is, and it's going to reveal more it's a as metropolis well. it incredible. was a metropolis incredible that was there it's, not, it's a worship building and many other buildings were there along with it that many of them the, the stone had been removed this one was lucky to say because it was covered up by the blowing sand whereas the others they were exposed and the stones were removed, so we can expect many more to be found. Hmm. Just as another thing I'm, I want to work on is the the new tomb, uh, uh, the new pyramid of Mutwent, which was uncovered even earlier than that, a few months before that, the, that Mutwent was the most famous wife of Pepe the II. So the, right now, there are a number of new uh, excavations uh, up in uh, Egypt and Nubia. So the, we're, what we're talking about then in relationship to the kind of, of, of production expenses that, that we're discussing here, we clearly know, as I said, about the books, people know about the lectures, they know about the tours, but these excavation activities really, I'm sure, run into, into a lot of expense, don't they? Well, let's put it that way. It costs you a minimum of 250,000 U.S. dollars per annum, which goes from September to May, the end of May. You can't dig any other time because June is exceedingly too hot. Okay. Mm -hmm. And July of August, you can forget. So it's a quarter of a million dollars we're talking about. But when you're talking labor, material, and everything, yes. you're talking about an expenditure, an expenditure of a, a quarter million U.S. dollars. That, that's if you're going to do top-notch uh, excavation. You can do much less if you're just doing uh, what I would call is a spot checking. And sometimes you do spot checking because... You have to check and see if it's worth digging. You make assumptions. Uh, all the excavations are based on assumptions, mm -hmm. but the assumptions are based upon some previous conditions that you okay. know are very sound. Doc, you've been going uh, to Egypt since, what, the 1930s? 1939. 1939. Why, here in 1993, is it still important for you to continue this work, and why is Egypt... Uh, Ethiopia. Why is it so important for us today as we face the 21st century? Because it's the source of mankind's beginning of quote-unquote civilization and high culture. Uh, I know where my digging is going to lead me if I get the years. I, my diggings are going to lead me right into what is today called Congo or Zaire. I know where it's going to stop. It's going to lead me into the, what is called the Ituri Forest because it's going to lead me to the Twa and the Hutu, those small people. Because they are the ones, they, along with the Grimaldi, the, the equally small people down at the southern end of Africa, which you call the 
uh, Koi Koi and the Kalaharis, or uh, it will it's going to lead me in the northern in the part of uh, uh, Sahara at the Tassidi Mountains, uh, where the, there's those um, what they call fresco those joints, uh, because these people in their own work showed us that they were the beginners of all of this we'll be talking about. Yes. Uh, Egypt itself, for one time, had its great little people, the Sibonetos. Why, some people will say, is it important for, and I don't just limit this to young people, but for us as a people to have this information, what is it going to mean? To, I mean, some people will say, that's fine, we did that, we find this information, what is it going to do for us today? I mean, that's the kind of attitude some people have because about this. Because get born. You'll be born again, not, not in the church, mm. because you can't get born in the church again. That's a joke. The only thing you get born is 10% of your income going down the drain. You will be born again because it will make you a new person. You're not going back to your mother and coming out. Not your, 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 your biological mother, but your spiritual mother. If, if I know the source, it's like now, already, you got to take the brothers and watch. The brothers and watch that look like the riot because Rodney King. No, Rodney King is an expression of what was building up. Brothers are rioting because they know themselves and don't plan to be insulted any longer. And don't care if they had 300 tanks. It wasn't going to stop it. Mm. When people know themselves, they are not going to be contained by tanks, atomic bomb, or anything. Mm. Dr. Ben is with us. We're live inside the GBE. Of course, as you know, the location is the Puck Building. It's the inner city broadcasting Heritage Day celebration. There's more to come inside of the GBE, the global black experience that is Afrocentricity. We are back live at Talk Radio 1190 WLIB inside of the GBE Afrocentricity. As you know, it's the inner city broadcasting Heritage Day celebration. This is the last day and a very appropriate day. As you know, the theme is education. And what better person to have with us on the day with a theme is education than Dr. Ben, who joins us inside of the broadcast today. Uh, Dr. Ben, we were talking a bit uh, inside of the program off the air about what is happening in terms of a whole reevaluation that, for example, University of Cairo, and, and really uh, all historians are going to have to now make related to this, and it's also going to obviously open up some of the activities that you've been talking about in terms of Nubianology. Can you comment about that? Yes, uh, I was saying that Helwan, which is the art a branch of the University of Cairo uh, already started to examine, re-examine their position on the artwork that they have put out. Uh, the, the, uni the, the branch of the University of Cairo mm. that uh, projects most of the archaeology is outside the city of Cairo okay. and they have started to having conferences of the Nubian scholars. I understood that uh, the American University in Cairo, I was informed that I have a piece of mail from the University of, uh, of uh, the American University in Cairo. This will be the first time in all the years that the American University in Cairo has invited me to a conference dealing with Egyptology. Well, the first time. First time. And you've been going to Egypt since 1939. Yes, I have never been invited by the University of American University of Cairo for any reason before, any reason at all. Uh, the, there is a group of scholars that's coming in uh, from Japan and other ways, and they are coming to. And I, based upon I've gotten news when I call that I have two invitations to come to these things. These are things in which I was excluded from intentionally, mm. but now. Uh, since I have maintained a lot of arguments and certain of the presentation in the museum and uh, for all this time I, I understood that the museum wants to know the basis of my previous uh, finding to justify having said these things uh, and I'm on record for all this time before because I quit uh, being a member of the museum over 20 odd years or 30 years ago on the basis of these things which are saying, which everyone in the museum refused to follow, not one person all thought I was crazy. Now, it, when, they, when I told them that if they dig consistently around Abu Simbel, Abu Simbel would prove to be much older than. I see. When I, I maintained that until the 18th dynasty in 1500, that Nubia was 
existed all the way to what is now called Nahamadi, because there is a suit. They, qu- they will question all these things, and these things have turned out to be the truth. So now they want to go back over all this what? material because they realize that it may lead them right. in, in other directions, obviously, than they, they wanted to face, really, ultimately. Right. Yeah. And, and where the arbitrary said that the pyramids of Egypt were older than the pyramids of Meru, I disagree. And said they wanted to even say that the Egyptians built the pyramids of... I said, it didn't matter to me if you call them Egyptian or what, because you're still speaking about the same people. What they were trying to say that the Egyptians, as a separate people okay. from the Nubians, built this or taught this. Right, right, I'm right, saying right, okay. that the people of the entire Nile is, was the same people. So that if you talk about the Egyptian or you're talking about a Nubian, you, it, it made no difference. You're talking about the same people. Mm. So it doesn't matter to me if the Egyptian did, because you're saying the same people of the Nile did it. Uh, we're going to go to a break in a couple of minutes, but I want to slip a couple of things in and also mention to our live audience listening, you're going to be able to join us on our telephone lines at 692-9542 with the nationwide toll-free number 1-800-332-1023 with Dr. Ben right after news at the top of the hour. Uh, there's been news, obviously, and a sense of concern that's been there for some people about the issue of going to Egypt. I've been talking with Sharifa from Alcan Travel, and Sharifa has been sharing with me, and I know that she came over with you recently, that she really didn't see any of the sort of thing that we were seeing projected on the news. Your own comments related to the issue of safety and going to Egypt. I don't know what they're talking about in the American newspaper. I go all up, including the new hotel that just opened from one end of Egypt to other. Sure, they had two indica- uh, 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 accidents or incidents where one uh, English woman was, was killed and one was a Japanese situation. Two, you got in New York City, bombings every day, killing every day, in England, uh, you got the blowing up of buildings every day. They just blow one up uh, two days ago. In, in Israel, you got a bombing every 30 minutes. And nobody asked anybody not to go to Israel or England or anything. Why, uh, why a sudden? You go in the, in the embassy, the American embassy in Egypt, in Cairo, and they got there. One of the countries you must take caution and visit is Egypt. But Israel, there's no caution. Ireland, there's no caution. Uh, I don't see the little uh, ethnic cleansing place there, Bosnia. There's no caution. Why Egypt? There's a caution. Mm. Well, you got the word from Dr. Ben, and as I said to you before, that's the same thing I heard, and I heard it from Sharifa from Al- Alcan Travel. Sharifa went and said she was ready. She was ready to see what was happening. And she said, Emotep, I'm trying to figure out what is this news that they keep she coming with. She just came back two weeks. I told her she got to come to let people know if you and I go in there, I don't want to die no more than you, Gary, or <laughs> exactly. anybody else. I'm exactly. in no hurry to go to heaven because I don't believe in it. I got inside me. <laughs> so I went to see, uh, to prove, you know, I'm, yes. I'm there. I told her to come. She came. We went from one end of Egypt to the other end of Egypt. What kind of, you know, we have been, I took groups when the Akina Lauri, well, they had a killing there. Yes. When they shot up the Pan American plane in Arabia. When uh, they fight with Gaddafi, when they block Gaddafi, I took African bears in the first place. Nobody got any fight with us. Even if there was a fight going on, you know, those people say, we don't have anything with you. Remember that black marine when he said, but uh, the, the man said, he said, you kill him. I said, look, brother, I have no fight with you. Mm-hmm. Then he said, well, I'm American too. Then he hit with a gun, but he's supposed to. Mm-hmm. He had no fight with him. He looked for a fight. They don't have any fight with me. We are brothers and sisters coming home. Dr. Ben is with us. It is, as you know, the Inner City Broadcasting Heritage Day celebration. Our telephone lines are wide open for you again. I mentioned it. The number is 692-9542 and 1-800-332-1023. We're live from the Puck Building. This is the GBE, the Global Black Experience. Emotep Gary Bird with you. We'll be back right after news at the top of the hour. <laughs> Coming to you live, as you know, inside of the GBE, the Global Black Experience, the Talk Radio 1180 WLIB. It's the Inner City Broadcasting Heritage Day celebration. We're moving into the final day of broadcasting. As you know, the theme today is education, and the ancestors have their own way of working things out. We did not know that the theme was going to be education last week, but we said, well, look, the best way to conclude our effort with that on Monday is to have Dr. Ben with us. We walked in this morning and they said, well, the theme today is education, 
And we said, we know everything is in divine order because Doc is certainly the perfect person to deal with this particular topic. For those of you who are listening in our radio audience, we're going to give you the opportunity of joining us on air in Manhattan, Brooklyn, the Bronx, Queens, Long Island, Staten Island, New Jersey, upstate, out of state, Connecticut, wherever you happen to be. The telephone number in the metro area is 692-9542 and the nationwide toll-free number 1-800-332-1023. Some of you also know that uh, through the course of April, our theme has been the African religious experience. And in that particular instance, of course, uh, Doc and I were talking uh, off the air a moment ago. And, Doc, we were discussing this whole reality of the fact that uh, one of the things that happens in terms of religion and history is that it becomes very difficult for people of a number of different faiths to deal with historical, factual information that in some instances comes into conflict with their view of their particular religion as being the beginning, the first or the only. And when we begin talking about Africa, and we started talking about Egypt, Kemet, al Kabulan, and so forth, um, it's difficult for some people to accept the notion of the kind of advanced spiritual, metaphysical societies and civilizations that were existing so many thousands of, of years before holy books that we see today. Can you comment about that? Yes, I think that what we have to accept, number one, is fear. Most of us, fear was driven into us as youngsters in terms of God. There is a God. The only God is the one where I'm telling you about. And if you think any way other than that, and God is a man, if you ever think that God could be a woman, or if you think that Jesus Christ, God, could have had uh, sex and had children, a normal family, you're going to get killed by God. Now, with me, it didn't bother me, because since they say, God going to kill me anyhow, I'm going to die because of sin. Why worry if God going to kill me? I'm going to die. No, I said, since I'm going to die, then... Let me think. Uh, since they said that God said, you are responsible for thinking. That's the double crossing God you got. Give me the right to think. And then say, if you think any way you want, and it isn't the way I want, you're going to die. So since man was born to die and go and die, I said, why am I going to not think? What happened is when you got the concept of God, while your parents, all those who you respect around you, you can't think. Number one, you have no concept that there's a God consciousness beyond Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Islam is the last one that came in, but it was Judaism and Christianity. And there you think, I don't care if you're an atomic scientist, an engineer, an MD, although, especially MDs, where you have anatomy and biology more than so than the most people, you know that there's no way for a child to come to the ribcage of anybody, you know? But still, you're going to say, all right, yeah, there's a possibility. Anything God want done. God got to have some hell of a power to get a child to a poor or a rib cage. All right, take that another way. Uh, you got to think, because when you've got woman, you've got a woman sitting down in the church, and she has had a baby, and let them run the story of Adam and Eve on her, and she believe it. All right, she was taught that, but common biology... She's now a grown woman. She had a child. She's still there because of fear that this God is punishing her to have a baby with pain. And the man who had the baby with her, all he do is sweat. No, he'd been sweating before he had the baby. He got, the man was born with pores. But when he perspire, right? So the baby or not, all right. She's going to have all this pain. And that woman allowed them to make her a fool to accept the Adam and Eve story. She's punished. She feels guilty when she should be proud. If she didn't take the story for what it's worth, if Eve did not show that fool called Adam to use his head and keep the show going, none of us would have been here. <laughs> because Eve would have been as dumb as he was. So I give Eve the credit for having nerve to go up there and that snake come down a tree. You are a reptile. It make a difference. A snake is a snake, regardless of the name you call it. Come down the tree and start this whole thing going. Huh? We hate our mothers, Gary. Most of us hate our mothers because of the Adam and Eve story. We say, well, women, start, women cause sin anyhow. She was the first. If she didn't mess with the, with the, with the snake, mm. we wouldn't have had those things. I'm, I, I am not, I'm saying to her, thank heavens you had sense enough to mess with the snake. Because we wouldn't have been here, leave it to the damn fool. Mm. So, the, the point is, 
Every little people you got and you meet anywhere got a God concept. What, what is God? How we got here? And it's all belief. Nobody got a right or wrong concept. It's all based upon belief. Uh, I, man feel his ego, and that's her ego, feels so that she can't come and go like other things. Okay. That we must have a hereafter, something after we, we did. Nothing wrong with that. I, I like that uh, theme. But I know that the theme don't make sense. If an elephant is going to come, live and die, or, or let's take a, a shark, or even worse than that, let's take a whale, going to come and die, and that's the end. What makes us figure this little tiny man who's going to live 100 years, 120 years, 30 years, if you're luckier, uh, he's going to live that. This whale is going to be here for umpteen years and somebody will put a harpoon in him. Uh, and a tree going to be here for 300 years, and it's finished when it falls down. But little man, so our ego, and then our ego is so bad that it must be my way. It can't be your way. If there's a God, it's got to be the way I see it and okay. all that thing. Otherwise, this man in Texas, immediately what they call him, a cult. So when the cult, they can do anything in the world. They have, look, they snub the man out, right? No different than they snub the moor out there in Philadelphia. But no different than they snub out the brothers in, in, in Jonesville in the, in um, Guyana. These people were rubbed out by the worst killers of the world. No different than Hitler. You see, we got to understand the psychology of people. Every one of us take the building of a Holocaust thing in Washington, D.C. One Holocaust thing. Suppose I decide to build, the, the, the indigenous people decide to build a Holocaust thing. Say, what are they going to do that for? Isn't that, didn't they go to a Holocaust? Didn't the African American go to a Holocaust? Mm -hmm. You see, it, they, they got too sight that what happened to you and I isn't a Holocaust. Yes. But what happened to the European is a Holocaust. Mm -hmm. You see, we psyched up. Mm. There's a place that we're going to take some telephone calls. I want you to um, comment on something that most people who do travel uh, to, to Egypt with you do learn, and that is the, uh, the, the primacy of the religious experience that took place there in Egypt and its relationship in preceding the other religions that you just mentioned. It is literally the mother of civilization in that sense. Well, I, I don't think we have, should have any problem. Because we could eliminate Islam, I know people, a lot of people could suffer. We could eliminate Christianity of the three religion and go to Judaism. Why? Judaism is the father, uh, or grandfather, Christianity is the father, and Islam is the son. In terms of the date when they came on the scene. I so let's deal with the father. And a great knock came out and you got no worry. Judaism, Judaism is based upon fundamental concept of set of moral laws. They call the Ten Commandments. We find those ten, plus thirty-two more in the Egyptian book of coming to you by them and a section called the Osirian drama. The next one is that they one God, but Judas didn't preach one God. They talk, the word Aliheno means more than one God. It's a plural God. Next. The Jewish word say, thou shall have no other God before me because I'm a jealous God. It did not say don't have another God. None before me. God, the Jewish God, is a jealous God that loses mind when you talk about any other God. Akhenaten, on the other hand, I'm in chapter 4, speak of one God. You didn't make no exception, no added, no, nothing. There, if Moses, an Egyptian, which the Jew clip, and if there was a Moses, no Moses in Egyptian history, there's no Joseph in Egyptian history, and, and Prime Minister by the name of Potiphar. None of them, re no such name in Egyptian decalogue. Now, if Moses was taught in the ways of the Egyptian priests, look what the Bible said, the, Jew the Jewish Bible, that Moses was taught in the ways of an Egyptian priest. What was the ways that Egyptian priests were taught? They went to school, they learned a series of facts, they brought Moses' learned. Moses said that he got ten commandments among Sinai, but when we look, those ten he learned, plus 32 more, was thousands of years before he was born, before the first Jew was born. So we know where they got it from. Mm -hmm. The Jews don't have any education known by anybody until he arrived, arrived at the same time as the Hyksos. They come, they come in there, they come out with a language, they come out with reading and writing and everything like that, attributed to a man named Moses. Now, when we go back thousands of years before Moses, 
there is writing. So they have to rely on this Egyptian plus other things like that. Mm. I mean, it, it, I, I don't think there's any question. Any dummy calling himself a minister or a priest or a rabbi should know this. I mean, you don't have to have no intelligence. If I was born before you, you could not have eaten before me. <laughs> Dr. Ben is with us at the Inner City Broadcasting Heritage Day celebration. Coming to you live from the Puck Building. As you know, this theme for this month is April, of course, the African religious experience. And the theme for today here at the Heritage Day celebration is education. And Dr. Ben certainly gives much of that. We'll open up our telephone lines and let you talk to him at 692-9542 and 1-800-332-1023. I don't know if y'all think I'm going to stand and look at me. Why don't y'all applaud and let the folks know that y'all are here and in the house. We'll take a break and we'll come right back after this. You're inside of the GBE, the Global Black Experience. We're coming to you live from the Inner City Broadcasting Heritage Day celebration. We're at the Pug Building, as you know, 295 Lafayette. And it looks like Dr. Ben has drawn a crowd. Put your hands together, let the folks know that you're here. Looking live, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are pleased to be with you. And just a quick note that Abu, a creator and designer of precious and semi-precious stones, is going to be having samples of his work on display. One of many today who has done that over the last several days for this very important celebration of arts, culture, and history today for Inner City Broadcasting, WBLS and WLIB. Well, going back in time, we go back to a brother who at the age of 20 stepped into the ancient kingdom for the first time and knew immediately, uh, perhaps, that he was going to return again and again. What he could not know at that particular time was that he had been chosen by the ancestors to be a leader and would be responsible for bringing back countless generations again and again. I call it the search for the lost aunt. He has been the leader of it for sure. I'm speaking, of course, of Dr. Yosef ben and Dr. Ben. Dr. Ben, welcome back. All right, good to have you with us, brother. We're going to open up our telephone line. I know there are several of you who are standing by at 692-9542 and 1-800-332-1023. Your telephone calls are going to be coming in right now. We will also, for those of you who are actually joining us live in the live audience, have a microphone which will be available. But if you might want to go around and just kind of work that a little bit. For those of you who maybe have a question or comment uh, concerning Dr. Ben's remarks so far. Again, we have a monthly theme, the African Religious Experience. And today, of course, the theme for the Inner City Heritage Day celebration is education. Let's go to our telephone line first. You're inside of the GBE. We're live from the Puck Building. Good afternoon. Hello. Hi, how you doing? Hi, uh, uh, hello. Hotep. Uh... I have a question for Dr. Ben. Sure, go right ahead. Uh, my question, uh, my line of questioning is uh, based on what you were just talking about, uh, but the specific question I have is how much credence can we give to the, uh, the idea that the ancient Hebrews were black people? None whatsoever. You can only say that there were people of the area, whether it was black, brown, uh, yellow. Uh, there's only one thing you could, in the Bible... The Hebrew Bible, the Torah, deal with in terms of color that we find, and that's in the book of Exodus. When uh, Moses was supposed to be acting up against God, and God is going to show him his power, and told him to put his hand in his bosom, and then he pulled it out and it had turned white. There's one thing we know then, that Moses wasn't white. That's the one. It doesn't say he was black, green, technicolor. To, to assure this again, if, 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 uh, Moses' sister... Miriam acted up when he was going to marry the daughter of the high priest of Ethiopia because she was not with, uh, with them. And Lord God turned her white, white with leprosy. So what happened there, we know that those two people, and we could, think, we could assume that Aram, this, the other brother, was equally not white. So all, the only time that they talk about the color of the people is in the book of uh, uh, Exodus with, re with reference to turning for, for punishment, turning somebody white. Because if they were white and God turned them white, then God was a jive turkey. Mm. So you're saying the fact of the matter is he's turning them white, he turned them indicating white, that white, they were some other color. No, it had to be. He turned, his hand had turned white. And in the case of her, her whole body had turned white, white with the leprosy. Mm. I see. Are you saying that the, uh, the so-called philosophers of Ethiopia are, uh, are incorrect when they claim that their uh, heritage goes back to the ancient uh, I don't, Israelites? I don't know what you mean by the so-called philosophers uh, uh, of Ethiopia. You're talking to one. Are you saying that I don't know? I am one. I was born there, born of a philosopher parent. parent uh, and I, we don't know. I don't know of us making that statement. All right, brother, I've got to move on and get another uh, caller, in this case, one of the members of our live audience. Go right here, brother. Yes, thanks. Uh, I'd like to say I give all honors to uh, Dr. Ben for the knowledge I've gained from Dr. Ben. I met Dr. Ben about 10 years ago in South Carolina when uh, I mentioned to you I just returned from Charleston. Yes. 
And that's what I met Dr. Ben at uh, Benedict College. But I'd like to say that we need to make a connection again, as I mentioned on your radio show about two weeks ago, to the brothers in the South and the sisters in the South, not just South Carolina, Alabama, Mississippi. You got brothers and sisters in there who have active programs going. I, th I think I told you about the Rights of Passage program. Yes. We got some folks coming up here next week with the big, it's the Blacks in Government program, because employment for blacks is a heck of a problem in South Carolina right now. But again, with Dr. Ben, I, I mentioned Elizabeth Middleton, who hosts a, a TV show, and Dr. Ben is very familiar with him. These are things that we need to do to connect with those brothers who are just getting out of the caves and out of the woodworks in South Carolina. We need to bring them out with our support by Dr. Ben and others in his organization. But again, I thank you for the history that I've learned from him. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Uh, uh, Doc, uh, again, we go back. You were, you were it turns out, uh, 20 years old in yes. 1939 when you went to Egypt for the first time. Right. You have watched uh, decade after decade, obviously, the different changes that we as a people have went through. What is your own feeling about what you've seen in terms of where we are now over the last several decades? Do you feel pleased about the progress that we've made in terms of our appreciation of the ancient knowledge and culture? Are you enthusiastic about it? Are you concerned? What is your feeling? I am guardedly optimistic. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I say guardedly for the simple reason the vast majority of us are still in euphoria. But there, is not, there are enough of us who have taken uh, the right step towards alleviating our condition. There was people saying, and I hear it lately, entrepreneurship is the answer. No. The clearing of our mind is the answer. You can have all kind of business. You remember, Gary? I'll give you an example, I'll try to remind you. We were at the Apollo Theater, and Mandela was just freed. And I was sitting in front of you, and you said to me, Dr. Ben, Mandela is just freed. What do you think about it? I said, I don't think about it. And you insisted again. And I said, well, it just means that he wouldn't have to masturbate again, and, and she wouldn't have to use a pillow. And everybody thought it was a horrible thing to say. But do you see what the jackass is doing? Do you see what he is doing? He has given away all the rights of his people. He has, he, he has signed papers that saying, and he can't even scared to live in the black neighborhood. Huh? And people say, well, how do you know that? Because I knew the man. Uh, the man didn't go to jail for freedom of black. He went to jail for not divulging information about a, a client as a lawyer, not a fighter for black people. The integrationists can't save us. And that's this, the point I, I realized from then. So when I heard, when I, again, and another day that's true, I saw, did you hear Mandela and, 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 and uh, what's her name, Winnie, going to have to fight each other? You said, why? I said, she wants to go back where she should have been in the first place, in the, 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 the woods fighting, killing crackers. He well, it wasn't going to do nothing. The deal was turned. And people can't, we, we, we believe in popularity contest, not what happened. You see what I mean? And now you, how are you going to have a government free and you got no rights? Not, not one square inch of land has been turned back. And everybody's talking about apartheid. Apartheid ain't what, ain't what a damn thing. I don't worry about apartheid. I got the land, there's no apartheid. Mm. We'll take a break and we'll come right back. Dr. Ben is with us. We're live at the Puck Center. And as you know, we'll be here for the rest of the day for the Inner City Broadcasting Heritage Day celebration. There's more to come. Well, our telephone lines are still open at 692-9542. And I see John Matusi Branch in the house of the African Poetry Theater at a very uh, successful event that I heard about this past weekend with Hakeem Adabudi. We'll talk a bit about that with him and with you inside of the GBE. This is the Global Black Experience. Imhotep Gary Bird coming to you live. We'll be back right after this. Coming back to you live at Talk Radio 1190 WLIB. Khalil Washington's in the house, too, I see, huh? <laughs> All right. It is the Global Black Experience, and we're coming to you as part of the Inner City Broadcasting Heritage Day Celebration 1993, a total black experience. As you know, Mark Riley will continue the activity throughout the course of the afternoon, and will continue also on WBLS. The theme for today is education, and we're winding up uh, with Dr. Ben, of course, very appropriately placed for this education theme. And as you know, the month of April inside of the Global Black Experience has been the African Religious Experience. We're getting a bit of a combination of both today. Needless to say, in terms of this particular broadcast, uh, Dr. Ben speaks for himself. And Inner City Broadcasting, of course, acknowledges that he speaks for himself. So for those of you who are standing by on the telephone lines in deep pain uh, because some of your heroes were perhaps maligned a bit, 
Now, we understand certainly where you're coming from, but that's why the lines are open for you as well to express yourself. We have time for at least a couple of calls, and also we're going to go to John Matusi Branch, who joins us live as well here at the Heritage Day celebration from the African Poetry Theater with a tremendous celebration this past weekend for the Hockey Matabuti. Welcome, John. Oh, thank you, Gary. Yes, it was a great affair and a very uh, important event uh, to honor someone who has um, made a great contribution to um, our culture and tradition and literature. So it was a really great affair. Uh, also, we'd like to um, say Asante Sana and Madasi to Dr. Ben, who for more than 15 years have been coming out to the African Poetry Theater in Queens and educating um, Africans out there. So uh, it, it's always a, a great honor to be in Doc's presence. And uh, we just want to say Madasi to him. Uh, this is very appropriate. You know, one of the master educators, yes. you know, that we have here for this, uh, the theme of this festival today. No question, no question you know, about so it. So it, it's good to be in, in the brother's midst. All right, brother. Good to have you with us today. John Matusi Branch from the African Poetry Theater. We'll go to our telephone line quickly. You're in line with Dr. Ben. Go right ahead, please. Good afternoon and welcome to the GBE at WLIB. In the name of Allah, compassion, merciful. In the name of Al-Hajjah, member of the African Islamic Commission. And for a number of years, uh, uh, Ben has been telling a great deal of lies and distortions about Islam. And uh, our Imam, Imam Baba, uh, and our members, we, we will confront you, and we want you to come out, stop being a coward, and deal with the situation. We intend to educate you on the lies that you told about Islam, any place, anywhere, anytime. Uh, you can come to 806 St. John's, our master. We'll meet you on the corner on Nostrand and Fulton Street. We'll meet you anywhere. Are, are you the brother who uh, called me last week, I believe, mentioning that you wanted to extend an invitation to Dr. Clark and to Dr. Ben to debate yes, this sir. particular yes, subject? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, I, I just I wanted to be sure. Before. I called you before, and, and, and basically, uh, all the Prophet Muhammad, wasalam, a black man, Muhammad Ahmed, a black man, 95% of the continent of so called Africa are Muslim. Uh, 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 Diop, Sheikh Diop, you know, an uh, educator uh, of, uh, of truth, uh, uh, a Muslim. You see, uh, Sange, Mali, Timbuktu. Just, just a quick note, brother. Let me just say this to you. We'll have a number of brothers who are going to be coming this week who are, you know, from uh, the Brotherhood of Islamic Scholars and so forth. We'll be talking yes. to brothers this week. But yes. I want to just Mama, get maybe one, one second. just want to get yes. specific, though. You mentioned a moment ago that you felt that there were some lies that were being yes, told yes. about this one. This That's is not the lie. one second. This, this is not distortion. brother. Hello. Yes. I'm you trying to work with you, so let me work with you. Yes, um, what I want to say is this isn't the place for us to ultimately try to have a full scale debate on the topic. However, just give us an example of what you feel is something that Dr. Ben has said well, that he could respond to. I'm just saying one point, and obviously it'll be up to him and you ultimately or the groups to get together on any kind of debate, but just give us an example of what you mean. Well, first of all, he, he made statements about uh, how Islam uh, destroyed uh, the civilizations on the continent. Well, uh, wh where did Timbuktu, uh, who ruled Timbuktu? Uh, the Muslims. Who uh, civilized Europe? The Muslims. Muslims from Senegal, Ghana. Uh, who is Sunni? Uh, uh, Sunni Hold on one here. second. I want to. I want to deal with one at a time. Let's start with the first piece. One second. I just want to say let's deal with one at a time. You're saying, in other words, the idea of of Muslims being involved in the destruction of black civilization is that's not something that you believe. Okay, let's that's let Dr. Let's let him respond to that one point. But again, I just want you to do this before Dr. Ben responds. Yes, I said to you well. before that uh, there's obviously a way to do anything, and you mentioned to me, I believe, that you had extended limitation. We did. Dr. Dr. Arthur Lewis is here who accepts, I'm sure, you know, all of the information concerning requests for Dr. Speak and whatnot and so forth. Uh, Dr. Arthur Lewis is, one second, Dr. Arthur Lewis is going to be giving out information for how to contact him. If you have contacted him, are you aware of this, Dr. Lewis? Have you ever been? He, I'll, he I'll has give a number, he, my brother. One Let second, me. one second, brother. I'm working this out for you. All yes, you got to do is work with me. Yes, sir. Dr. Arthur Lewis will give a telephone number and information out, and you will then be able to have a direct contact to reach Dr. Ben in order for that to be discussed. So yes. that will take care Thank of you. that. I want you to hang up and listen and let Dr. Ben respond to the thrust of your question. Okay, take it. Which take concerns it. the destruction of African civilization by Muslims specifically. The jihad, and I don't think that any scholar can deny there were jihads. The jihad is Muslim war. The Muslim came in all of East Africa, and nobody's book can deny they came in as conquerors with armies. But let me give the young man a little. He knows so much. But I was the professor Al-Azhar. Al what was he at Al-Azhar? 
When we uh, talk about that conquest, Dr. Ben, and, and this is just a note that I'll make, and obviously, as I said, we'll talk to people later in the week, and I'm sure they'll have points of view. Is there a separation of Arabs and Muslims that one makes there? No, there was one group. They came as one group. Okay. Uh, Islam started among the Arabs. No one can deny it. Uh, that's historical fact. They invaded different countries with that refuse to accept the teachings of Muhammad. As a matter of fact, there were some Africans with them. The one that converted Muhammad and let him talk about was Hadzad Kubad ibn Rabad, otherwise called Bilal. This is history. Nobody can change that. Muhammad himself deal, dealt with his maternal grandmother coming from Ethiopia and that and he spoke lordingly of Ethiopia teaching to the world. So I don't know what is... And furthermore, why should I debate with a boy and not the man? We're at Talk Radio 1190 WIB. Good afternoon. This is the Global Black Experience. We'll go to our next caller and give you the chance to join Dr. Ben. And we have time for at least maybe one, possibly two more. Go right ahead, please. Yes, I have great respect for you, Dr. Ben, and I hope you don't take this question amiss. But I was in Egypt myself. I've read that oceans of ink have been spilled over this, but I've never seen one word or heard one word. Why did the Egyptians paint the most Egyptians red colored skin, and if they chose black colored skin for others, or, you know, black and red? Why did they use those colors? Okay. Because, because they won't talk. When the Egyptian, for instance, they used green for Osiris, green was a symbol of resurrection. They weren't dealing in terms. You've got to remember the racism that we are going through now. Those people didn't have no concept of it. There's no word in the Egyptian language in Meduneta for race. This is strictly a European creation. So when those people deal with people as green and white, when in all caskets and in all funerals, the people are painted white. Uh, does it mean that all people are white, their clothes are white, they were white, and everything like that? Colors were used to demonstrate things other than race. They had no concept of race. Okay, then this is my question. Why were the majority painted red or reddish? I just told you because the majority, it, it's just a color. But what did you it signify? Red, red people? What did it signify? I, I beg your pardon? What did asking? it signify? Yeah. What did it symbolize? It signified a common people. A common people that, along the entire Nile. It, the Egyptians painted, the Nubians red, it painted the, 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 uh, the Tanahitian red, it painted the Meroites red, they painted the Ethiopian red, and they painted the people of Puanit. But red. you're saying, you're, say, you're not giving any symbolic reference or any, any, it's just arbitrary. I gave, you, it's just arbitrary. I, I, you're I, I, just saying that chose giving, red, but why did I'm they I'm not giving you what you want. Uh-huh. Uh, to the color, let me just. what I know. Uh, to the color, are you, are you indicating that you have a perception that the color red was used for a specific region, reason? Well, it was the dominant color that I saw. So no, I understand that. I'm asking, symbolic. one second, I got it. I'm asking, you're saying, I'm asking you, do you have any knowledge or any sense that it was used for a particular reason, or are you just asking the question in an open-ended way? I assume everything has a reason. Right, so you're saying the color red to you, you'd like to know what the reason was behind it. That was the dominant color. And, and I just the color told you, they painted the majority tenet. of the people that way to show the commonality, the commonality of the people. Just like the Egyptians, the, okay. the ancient Egyptians did not put the face of a human being to represent a god. But they could have chosen any color, you're saying? They could have. They didn't have the, the, the race thing that you... The thing that called race now that eat up all of us, I think Eva, Eva Sanford said it best in her book, The Mediterranean World. The white heat of racism that permeates Western society, people can't realize that it wasn't there in ancient times. Mm. To the caller, thank you very much for the call. I want to uh, segue into Dr. Arthur Lewis, who uh, is going to give us a bit of information concerning what took place this past weekend at the Tribute, and also, Doc, in relationship to people who do want to show support for Dr. Ben's efforts in excavation, and obviously some of the other projects that are happening, like the village and so forth. Okay, the event was given on uh, Saturday, uh, 24th of April, at Minnesink in Harlem, as we give it all the time in the black community, it was well attended. We had the Jim Bay drummers, we had jazz, Aubrey Welch's jazz, uh, instrumentalist and it started at 7 and ended at 12 and was fantastic. We had international representation from the uh, Dravidian or Tomos from India and the UN was well represented at that particular function. Uh, the craft was also introduced and instructions were given to us on what we will be doing with the uh, banquet in the future. Mm. Now for people who actually do want to involve themselves in helping to support these efforts, Dr. Ben, uh, for those who didn't join us in the earlier hour, mentioned that the excavation alone uh, can run sometimes anywhere from a quarter of a million U.S. dollars. And that's not for an entire year, but literally for a season. 
And we're talking now, Doc, as you mentioned, about having found a facility now 9,000 years old, a, nine, a building that actually is 9,000 years old, the remains of that. Yes, that, and that's down at uh, uh, 40 miles uh, uh, northwest of uh, Abu Simbel. And you're saying, in other words, that that building may perhaps be only part of a larger metropolis it's as a, well. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's part of the complex of metropolis there. It's, the, it's proven to be the foundation of a worship temple. Okay, so th there's an opportunity obviously here for discovery that will take us 9,000 years back in the yeah. time. Uh, we get the, the whole concept of dating has to be revised mm. by that one uh, uh, discovery, uh, uh, uncovering. Now, uh, Dr. Lewis, how do people go about supporting Dr. Okay, Lewis? if you want to uh, give a contribution, monetary contribution to Dr. Bin uh, so that he can continue to work, so you can call the number that I will give you, and you can, we'll give you information specifically on how you can make that contribution with addresses. The number is a 212 number, 281-1700-212-281-1700. One more time because it's important, 212 Two eight one one seven zero zero. We'll give you information on how you can uh, donate or give contributions to Dr. Ben on any of his trips or his excavation. Hmm. For those of you who are listening, again, uh, there is an opportunity here to show support in a very special and unique way. I know that often there are many of us, and I can travel not only just around the country but around the world. And you say Dr. Ben's name, and someone wherever you go is talking about the impact that he's had on their lives.